Hi, my name is Elon and I'm going to show you how to use my frame and form validation component. I've segmented and labeled this video to help you skip and jump around to relevant information more comfortably. All right, so let's begin. The form validator is a lightweight, invisible component that expands control and applies rules to your forms from within. It goes right under your already existing form, so there is no need to build or style everything again from scratch. Form validator helps you set the rules for any text-based field types in addition to upholding built-in regular expressions that make sure that every field type knows how to demand proper formatting. And it does all that without interrupting or overwriting any of the already existing native frame of form properties. A well set up form validation can help us prevent spam, filter out incoherent information, and control input contents. So, before we jump in, let's quickly review how the validator handles each field type. There are four text based field types we cover. The first one is the text field. The text field type doesn't have any spatial regulations. We can choose if we want to allow the user to include spaces, numbers, or spatial characters, as well as control a character limit for the field. The phone field is regulated to allow only numbers, with only one exception, the plus sign. The user is allowed to include a prefix like plus one or plus 972, followed by seven to 10 digits Users can also skip the prefix and use their local trunk number. Of course, by default, the field doesn't accept spatial characters or spaces. The third one is the email field. The email field is regulated to follow a standard format of user at domain.tld. To prevent spam and honest mistakes, we regulated the TLD expression to let only trusted whitelisted TLDs through the validation. You can find the full list of whitelisted TLDs linked in the email properties panel. In case you want to add another TLD to the whitelist, there is also no problem. You can manually add as many TLDs to the whitelist as you'd like. The last field type is the text area. The text area controls are similar to the regular text field with only one exception, a higher maximum word limit. Oh, and if any of our fields are marked as not required, our validator supports us with a dynamic solution. If the field is left empty, the validator gracefully ignores it, but if the user decides to fill in, we put the information through the validation rules we initially set for the field, and let the user know what he needs to correct before he's allowed to continue and submit the form. This way, we can make sure we're getting coherent information even through non-required fields. The form validator already gives us standard informative HTML5 error messages for both formatting errors and character limit errors, but we can always customize them further if we want to change the language or even just to add some flavor. Now that we understand what the form validator can do, I can finally show you how simple it is to add and use the component in your projects. First, grab the form validator component from the description, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate using a free waitlist template I got on the Framer Marketplace. First, we want to locate our form builder and paste the validator directly inside. Now that the validator is a child of our form, it will connect and affect fields only within this specific form. The component is invisible and sizeless, but to prevent layout shifts, we do want to set its position type to absolute and pin it to the top right. You'll see why soon. To help us with the initial setup, let's turn on the debugger from the properties panel. You can now see we have a small annotation telling us the debugger is active on the position of our component. This is only a small helper for a quick setup, so remember to turn it off before publishing. And if you don't see the debugger annotation, make sure you change its parent container from clip to visible. In this instance, our waitlist asks for three different field types and a checkbox. Let's decide we want the name, email, and the checkbox fields to be mandatory, while the phone number will be set as not required. For the name, let's go with name ID, for the email, email ID, and lastly for the phone, phone ID. Normally, I would just emit the ID at the end, but we'll keep it to help us understand what we're seeing in the debugger better. Again, you will understand very soon what I mean. Now that we got our inputs named, let's go back to the validator component and create our rules. For each field we want to control, we need to create an item. Let's create three new items. Our first item is a text field type, second is the email field type, 
and the third one is the phone field type. The first text field type will be connected to our name ID input. As for the rules, for a name, I'd like to preserve the ability to enter spaces in case the user wants to enter his full name, maybe. And the default character limit of 25 is enough. Numbers and special characters aren't fitting for a name field, so we'll prohibit them. The second email field type will be connected to our email ID input. The validator already handles all the work with a regulated expression here, so there isn't much to control, but let's try adding a custom TLD. We'll go with um, dot Elon 5, okay, which is definitely not on our default whitelist. As for the last field, we will connect our phone ID input. Here too, the validator will automatically ensure we're accepting only properly formatted phone numbers. So in this case, let's create a custom format error message. We'll say, hey, you entered an invalid phone number. And we're basically done. All the rules are already applied to our fields. Let's look at our debugger and check if everything is set up correctly. Just press the live preview and our debugger is going to appear on the bottom left corner of our canvas. And let us know if for some reason one of our fields is not connected successfully. It's very helpful when you accidentally make a spelling mistake and you don't realize it. Okay, now that we've confirmed everything is connected, let's test and see if our rules are being enforced. The rules we set say we can't have spatial characters in our field name. And as you can see, we're getting a format error message. We also can't use made up TLDs, but we did allow an exception for .elon5. We can enter only numbers in our form field and they have to be properly formatted like a phone number. Also, if you want to enter a country code, we can start the number with a plus sign and the form will accept it. The method is pretty simple. For each field in your form, you create a corresponding validator field. Match their names, set your rules, and you're done. I created this component out of need, and I really hope you find it as useful as I did. So thank you for listening and goodbye for now.